Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A pleasant good evening and greetings. And welcome to the live stream of our empowerment service this evening. I, I would like to apologize. We seem to have been experiencing some te technical difficulties here, but we are trusting God that all is resolved. And this evening, we are so glad that we, you could join us in our empowerment service. We are from the Aruka Worship Center, and our host pastor is Bishop Vade Nukai. This evening, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just praise you and we thank you and we raise a hallelujah unto you. Lord, we thank you this evening for this time that we can be empowered through your word. We commit the rest of this service into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. In our empowerment service, we have been dealing with a series, Keys to Abundant Living. So far, we have dealt with two keys. The first one was overcoming fear that was dealt with by Reverend David Benji. The second one last week, Reverend Camille Spencer dealt with getting along with others with particular emphasis on the stay-at-home conditions brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. And this evening, we are dealing with our third key, that is controlling anger. Now, before you say, that is not for me, that is for the angry people, let me assure you that we all, all of us, have to deal with the issue of anger in our lives. Even those who are calm and those who are easygoing have anger issues in particular areas. So it is important that we learn how to control anger. It's an important life skill. So this evening, we will be dealing with understanding anger to the limited extent that time would allow us and also ways that we can control our anger. I will be focusing on negative or sinful anger today. Firstly, what is anger? Anger is an emotion characterized by strong displeasure or that you feel have done you wrong. So it is an emotion and it is characterized by strong feelings, strong feelings of displeasure, antagonism, and it is directed toward someone or something that you feel have done you wrong. And generally, this type of anger seeks some sort of revenge. Now, I don't want us to be fooled into thinking that anger is a simple emotion that has some kind of limited effect. No, anger is a powerful emotion and it is far more dangerous than we realize. It could have, in fact, it could have devastating effects on yourself and those who are around you. Some ways that anger affects us is one, physically. Example, anger damages our digestive system through stomach ulcers, acid reflux, and so on. It causes headaches, insomnia, or trouble sleeping, skin problems, high blood pressure, which could lead to heart attacks, stroke, and other health issues. And this is coming from the medical experts. And at a personal level, I have heard many testimonies where people who had some sort of illness, illnesses, say example, arthritis, and no matter how much pray, they pray or get prayer and so on, take medication, nothing seemed to help. However, when God finally is able to get through to them and show them that the real problem is the anger, and bitterness, and resentment, and they, and they deal with that issue, then the symptoms are allevi alleviated. Secondly, Anger, anger affects us psychologically or emotionally. Unresolved anger could lead to depression, increased anxiety, eating disorder, alcoholism, and substance abuse. Also, it affects us relationally, right? The, the destructive, many destructive results for you, not only for you, but for those who are closest to you. The experts tell us that unresolved anger is a major contributing factor to the destruction and failure of marriages, breakdown in families, domestic abuse, relationships, 
in the workplace, in the church, in society. Anger affects us spiritually. When we lash out in anger and we say negative things, we grieve the Holy Spirit. Our testimony becomes tarnished. If unreserved anger could lead, could lead also to hatred and even murder. Uncontrolled anger is dangerous to ourselves and to those around us. And when you do not understand your anger or how to control it, you find that you will, you will end up acting in ways that are destructive. So the first step towards controlling anger is understanding your anger and what it is that makes you angry. So let me ask you, what causes you to be angry? Is it someone, a group of people? Is it circumstances? Well, let me tell you, anger is a very complicated emotion, right? Anger is listed as a primary emotion, but it's also described as a secondary emotion. What does that mean? What that means is that whenever you are experiencing certain other feelings like fear, hurt, you're feeling rejected, frustrated, humiliated, and this, these feelings act as a trigger towards anger, your resort to anger. So it comes like an iceberg. The anger is at the, at the top. That is what you see. That is what you experience. But at the bottom there, the trigger is all these other feelings that you are experiencing. And it's important that we understand that. Because if we are going to control it, we have to understand what is causing it in the first place. So I will just quickly look at some, list some common causes. A feeling of sadness or grief over loss. It might be the loss of a family member, a friend, also through death, through divorce. It could be a loss of finances and your job right now in the COVID-19 pandemic. Many of us are losing our jobs, income streams, drying up. You're dipping into and depleting your savings. You have a lot of angry feelings going around. Also, you might be dealing with a lot of other stress in your life. And when you're and the frustration of that other stress, you might find yourself being more easily angry at, than usual or getting angry at unrelated things. Or you might be tired. I want to list another one that we don't normally think about. Um, you might be either physically or mentally unwell, and you might be in pain, and the thought of a serious illness, that could lead to feeling of anger. That's a trigger also. Another trigger is when we don't get our way. You know, in families, you, you might expect things to go a particular way between spouses, parents, children, siblings, and so on. When it doesn't, you start to feel hurt, frustrated, unloved, even rejected, and those are triggers feeling anger. Also, your present condition might not be related to the anger you're feeling. It might be related to a past experience, such as abuse or traumatic experience, betrayal, a quarrel or fight with someone or so on. And you know, if anger because goes unchecked and unresolved and uncontrolled, you know, anger could end up being incorporated in a person's personality over time. And it could become a way of life. Another trigger is your, is your childhood or up, upbringing, right? You might have been taught that it is okay to act out your anger aggressively. Or you might believe that you should not complain. So you start to repress your anger. We'll talk about that in a little while. So what happens, all of these, and there are many other triggers. These triggers, what happens is subconsciously, these triggers cause you to shift into anger mode. It's not something you do purpose, purposefully. Because what happens when you get angry instead now, instead of feeling hurt and vulnerable, it gives you a sense of control and power. Also, if you may have been, went through abuse and so, the feeling of anger, somehow you feel it helps protect you from getting hurt again or from that traumatic experience. So these forms, so these triggers cause us to become angry. And when we become angry, we respond. Now, I just want to mention two ways that we can respond, two forms of anger. First one is rage. What is rage? Rage is an intense anger. 
It's an anger explosion. We're familiar with that. But let me give you an example. You might have a frustrated driver on the road and he may have lost his job. He don't know how he's going to pay his rent, take care of his family. He drive in, he's stuck in traffic, no frustration. And here, here comes somebody driving on his shoulder and cuts in front of him. And at that point, his emotion just boil over into anger and road rage takes place. Intense anger. And this kind of rage leads to physical abuse and also to violence. Some people might think that it's inappropriate to react that way. So what they choose to do, instead of expressing or exploding, they choose to repress their anger. Now, when anger is repressed, what that simply means is that you hold it on the inside and you don't show how it is you feel. So that leads to bitterness and that leads to resentment. So even though you have, the point I want to make here is that even though there's not an outward expression of, of explosion does not mean that you're okay. It doesn't mean that it is not anger. It is repressed anger and it is still poisoning your system and it is still ruining your relationship. So if you have not dealt with it, this resentment, this bitterness could be expressed by what is called passive aggression. And passive aggression is when you're feeling angry on the or inside, but outside you present, you present a, a face that is neutral, that is pleasant, that is even cheerful. And then, however, passive aggression find ways, indirect ways, to show the anger, to show what, what is really felt. Let me give you an example. A person might be feeling resentment towards you might be feeling resentment towards someone and that person asks you to do something. And you said outwardly, yeah, sure, no problem. I will, I'm happy to do it. All good and dandy on the outside. You have resentment. So passive aggression comes in. And you know what you do? You purposely delay in doing the task. Although then you know there's a time limit or you, intent you make intentional mistakes or you do it, but with a lot of complaints and murmuring so both of them they are forms of anger now many people they are angry they stay angry they live in anger all because they don't know how to get out of anger and oftentimes the anger are, pro are projected on people who are innocent people in the family your spouse your children even the pets could get the brunt of the anger so let's see what the Bible says about anger. The Bible says a lot about anger. It, the Bible speaks at length to the negative impact of man's anger. Ephesians 4, 31, and this is just one of the many scriptures, says, Let all bitterness, repressed anger, rot and anger, right? Rot is the, is the explosion, and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Here the Bible is clearly saying that anger is not okay. We need to put away the bitterness, the wrath, and the anger. Don't let it control you. You control it. So now we are going to look at some steps how to control anger. First thing we have to do is we have to, you have to acknowledge your anger. The worst possible thing that you could do with anger is to sweep it under the, the rug or the carpet and pretend that it is not there. The all, we all know that the only way you could deal with a problem is by recognizing and acknowledging that there is a problem. So don't try to justify your anger. Don't say I have a right to be angry. Don't make excuses to say anger. Don't say that is how I am and I can't help it. Not true. God expects you to put away anger. Don't transfer the anger feeling or blame other people. Own up to your feelings. Acknowledge that it is real and it needs to be dealt with. The second thing is we spoke about triggers. Identify the trigger. Identify what it is that is driving this anger that you are feeling. That's very biblical. Genesis 4, 6, Cain was wrought. He was very angry when God accepted his brother's sacrifice instead of his. And you know what God asked him? Cain, why are thou wrought? 
the God was acting, identify the source of your anger, the trigger. So it's important that we understand the trigger so that we will know what steps to take to control it. <clears throat> Excuse me. For example, if you find that you're always angry and you do your examination, you know, you're always flying off the handle and so, and you realize that you're angry because that is how you grew up, that is how you were brought up, then you could start taking steps in the right direction. You could start now retraining yourself Re, re, realigning your thinking to what the word of God says and to handle the anger in a proper manner through the help of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me tell you, this will take time and this will take self-examination. And you can see help from family members and from also trusted, mature believers. The third step, forgive. Right? If as you are going through, you realize that your bitterness or your resentment is what you feel, your anger is as a result of bitterness or resentment or hurt that you feel towards or by someone, sorry, then what you need to do, you need to forgive the person that is at fault. Colossians 3.13 tells us forgiving one another even as Christ forgive you. So yeah, when you make a commitment to give, forgive, what you're doing is that you are no longer holding the person's offense against them, right? So you have to make that commitment to forgive. I know it is not easy, but with God's help, we can do it if we want to control our anger. Fourth thing, resolve the, uh, resolve the conflict if possible. Talk to the person and try to resolve it. Now, when you go to the person, be wise. Don't go with a confrontational or accusatory or angry manner. Ask God for the wisdom and the emotional strength to do this. And you can seek biblical counsel from mature and confidential believers. Or if it is a situation, remove yourself from the environment that is causing the angry feeling. However, you must recognize that there are many instances where it is not possible to resolve it because the person may not be willing to engage in dialogue or if you talk to the person, it might end up making it worse or you may not be able to take yourself out of the environment. What you have to do then is you have to accept it and you have to understand you are responsible for your, your own action, not the actions of others or the environment and you have to deal with the angry feelings and issues that arise in your life. The fifth, the fifth step is a very important step. Pray, 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 pray. Pray for a change in the person's attitude or change in the circumstances. Pray concerning, you know, we spoke about it in, in step two, we spoke about identifying the trigger. If you have problems identifying this trigger, pray and ask God to reveal it to you. Pray concerning your angry feelings. You know, talk to God about the angry feelings. He already knows. Talk about the angry, the anger explosions and your repressed anger. Ask him to cleanse you. Ask him to renew your soul with his love and joy and to take away the anger and fill you with, with peace. Now, does this mean that you will never be angry again? Well, maybe not. The practical experience is that you might still grapple with the issue, but you would find that with the same degree of intensity and over time you would feel less and less angry so give yourself to the process and i want to assure you this evening that god answers prayer he has answered my prayer he has answered prayers of many believers including yourself and he will hear your prayer and he will answer the sixth one is submit to the holy spirit it is the holy spirit who will bring that healing and that peace to help you to deal with the anger. Accept the peace and the healing of God. And the Holy Spirit also directs you. He directs you what to do. He gives you the wisdom, and not only the wisdom, but he also gives you the strength to do it. Now you know in yourself you cannot do it. In yourself you cannot deal with anger issues. But there's the Holy Spirit. God has promised and given us the Holy Spirit who is able to help you. The Holy Spirit will direct you to the word of God. And the word of God has a biblical pattern and principles 
that you should align yourself to. So allow the Holy Spirit to help you in controlling your anger. The seventh, the seventh step is refuse to keep thinking angry thoughts. What the enemy will do is that he will bring the offense and he will bring whatever the trigger is to your mind over and over again. And a lot of times when that happens, you feel that look, there's nothing really that I can do, but that is a lie from the pit of hell. The Bible says that we are exact, we are supposed to do that. In 2 Corinthians 10, 5, it says, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So bring the angry thoughts into the obedience of Christ. And Philippians 4, 8 tells us how, sorry, tells us how we ought to do, well, how we ought to do it. It says that whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, all of those things, think upon these things. So whenever you get the negative, angry thoughts come flooding into your mind, what you need to do is to put it or bring it into captivity to the obedience of Christ and replace it with godly thought. This has to be a deliberate act on your part. And the final one that I want to deal with this evening is observe the time limit. Ephesians 4, 26 tells us, let not the sun go down on your road. God has given us a time limit. So does that mean that, mean that once the sun doesn't set that we could give in to anger and behave any way, anyhow we choose to? No, it doesn't. What is saying that if we become angry for whatever reason, do not stay angry. Do not dwell in it. We are to deal with our anger, anger issues quickly and in a constructive, God-honoring way. So the anger doesn't grow stronger and produce bitterness in our lives. So the biblical admonition here is to deal with anger on the same day of the provocation. So before we go to sleep at night, we should have taken positive steps to find a solution and to alleviate the anger. I know in our lives, many sons have gone down, uh, you know, on the anger that we feel years have passed and so on, and we are still feeling that anger. But if that be the case, we could start today. We cannot allow the sun today to go down on our feeling of anger, our feeling of hurt. But with God's help today, we can control our anger. Because letting go of our anger when we have been hurt, it is not easy. But if we put the biblical principles into practice, we are well on our way to controlling our anger rather than letting our anger control us. We can do it today. With the help of God, we can do it. You know, the Bible tells us that we can do all things through Christ with strength near to us. And that includes controlling our anger. So we have been dealing in our empowerment service, keys to abundant living. And that's our third key. You know, the list that I gave you is by no means exhaustive. There are many other, there are many other steps that we could take, but we could begin with what we have dealt with today. And this evening, I want to say thank you so much for joining us in our empowerment service. And we look forward to have you join us again next week at 6 p.m. Also, Join us tomorrow at 6 p.m. at our AWC Church page, and then we will be having prayer tomorrow. May God bless you richly.